when you speak and when you move when you do what only you can do it changes us it changes what we see and what we see is when you come into the room when you do what only you can do it changes us it changes what we see and what Everything else can wait Spirit of the living God Spirit of the living God Come now and breathe upon our hearts Come now and have your way Cause when you speak and when you move When you do what only you can do It changes us, it changes what we see what do we seek and when you come into the room when you do what only you can do it changes us it changes what we see and what Well, this next song that our team is going to lead you in is a new original song that we wrote called Spirit Come. It's a song of invitation that the Holy Spirit would come and invade our everyday lives to continue to change us and shape us into the image of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is God at work within us. One of my favorite lines in the song happens right at the beginning. It says, Spirit come, come and fill this place, come and meet my praise. Our song is an invitation and God never turns down an invitation. So let's sing, let's worship together.
Oh Spirit, come Come and fill this place Come and meet my praise Come and have your way Oh Spirit, come
Well, with the elections just around the corner, I thought it would be a good idea to just center us all as followers of Jesus in what really matters right now. Friends, we are a part of a kingdom, not of this world, but rooted in God's presence. So in the midst of a very polarized culture, remember that our allegiance to Christ comes before any allegiance to a political party. So I would encourage you in the coming days and weeks to spend more time in prayer than you do watching the news. Spend more time reading the Bible than you do reading the headlines on Reddit. Spend more time praying for our nation's leaders than you do complaining about them. With our conversations and our social media posts, let's use our words to build up each other instead of tear down one another. Use your platform to seek unity over division. Remember that we're called to be ambassadors of Christ and not representatives of politics. There are people in the body of Christ who will vote differently than you. There are friends who sit next to you in church that won't vote your preference. But the family of God is beautiful not because we all talk the same, look the same, think the same, or vote the same. No, our common ground is the solid rock, our cornerstone, Jesus Christ. Don't lose sight of that during this vote. Don't lose sight of that ever. Yes, go out and vote, but realize that God is not concerned about the outcome of this election. God is ruling and reigning. He's got this. He's got you. Much love. Well, hey, thank you so much for joining us for Bridges Church. Whether you're watching online or you're joining us in one of our house churches, we want to connect with you. So you can actually go to bridgesnashville.com slash house church. And on this page, you're going to see all of the lyrics to our worship songs. You're going to see our giving portal, but you'll also see our digital connect card. And this is something you can fill out just to give us a little bit of information about you. And our connect team is going to reach out to you. Connect this week. We want to give you a free gift online. Or you can also just go to bridgesnashville.com slash connect. Also, if this is your first time, feel no obligation to give. We're just so glad that you decided to join us for church today. Uh, but if you do call Bridges Nashville your church home, you know that giving is one way that we honor God. When we give of our tithes and offerings, it's an act of love, worship, and obedience. Listen, Jesus said in Luke that it's better to give than to receive. And Paul told the early church to excel in the grace of of giving. So if you want to give this morning, you can go to bridgesnashville.com slash give. Well, lastly, I have a really special announcement. Uh, if you were with us September for First Sunday Gathering, you know that Pastor Caleb is moving on to a new season of ministry. He's a worship pastor up in Virginia. He's doing great. I got a chance to talk to him last week. But that opened up a unique door for us here in Nashville. And we began to pray, God, who is it that you have for that role to step in, not just to fill those shoes, but to take it to another level. And so David Sawyer and his wife, Michelle, they've really been with us in some form or yeah, fashion right. from the very beginning. Our first info session in 2017, David's been a lead pastor for 16 years. And I'm so excited to announce we're going to be bringing him on as a staff pastor here at Bridges Nashville. So Pastor David, would you just say a couple words, man? Man, KP, I am so excited to join Bridges Nashville and be part of the staff team. And uh, I love to pour into leaders. I love to teach and disciple. And so I am so pumped <laughs> yes. to do what we need to do yep. to make Bridges Nashville a name Come on. in Nashville. Come Amen? On, man. And so we're, we're going to do some amazing things. I believe it. Hey, I'm excited to be bringing on PD yeah. on staff at Bridges Nashville. Listen, first Sunday gathering, Next Sunday, 10 a.m. at the Listening Room Cafe. We're going to be inside the Listening Room Cafe. Pastor David's going to be preaching. You don't want to miss it, so be there. And uh, just remember, Daylight Savings Time. Okay, so we'll see you next Sunday, first Sunday gathering at the Listening Room Cafe. Now let's join Jamia as we continue our foundation series on the Holy Spirit. Well, today we are continuing our foundation series, and today we're specifically going to talk about how we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
Now listen, this is one of my favorite things to talk about because personally in my life, my life went to another level. My Christian walk went to another level when I was filled with the Spirit. And so I encourage you to lean into this message today. And I pray for those of you out there who maybe are hungry for more, you've been asking for more, you've been wondering, is there more? My prayer is that the Holy Spirit would fill you with overflowing. So first of all, before we talk about how to be filled, let's kind of set the foundation and talk about who is the Holy Spirit. Now, I know we've kind of spent some time talking about this here at Bridges, so I won't go too far into it, but I think it's important just to set the foundation. So the Holy Spirit is the third part of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he is the very Spirit of God who dwells on the inside of every believer. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19, don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own for you were bought at a price. So glorify God with your body. And then in Romans 8 and 9, it says, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. So right there, it's very clear. If you are a follower of Christ, if Jesus is your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And so there's a lot we could go into even just about our body being his temple and how important it is to take care of our bodies because the Holy Spirit dwells in us. But just know that the Holy Spirit lives in you if you are a believer. The second thing about the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit has been here since the beginning of creation. A lot of times when we think about the Holy Spirit, a lot of people think about it in the context of the New Testament. But really, if you go back to Genesis chapter one, in the very beginning, when God was creating the heavens and the earth, it said the Spirit of God hovered over the deep. And as God would give instructions, as he would say, let there be light or let there be sun and moon, the Holy Spirit took those words and he would cause the very thing that God spoke to come into existence. He literally was the life giving force that was there at the very beginning of creation. Isn't that awesome to think about? The Holy Spirit is the very life of God. And as a believer, that life lives on the inside of you and I. He is the creation power force living on the inside of us. And so when the Bible talks about how there's power of life and death in our tongue, that's what it means. When we speak words, the spirit of God takes those words and it produces life. So that's why it's important that you don't speak idle words or that you don't speak words that are negative and that can produce death because the power of life is in our tongue, the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. In the Hebrew, the word spirit, it's ruah in the Hebrew, and that means wind or breath. And so a lot of times you may hear people refer to things like the breath of life, right? Or the wind of the spirit. That's where that comes from. The word literally means breath. So the Holy Spirit is the breath of God. Think about that. That's amazing to think about. Isaiah 11, 2 says the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and strength, a spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord is a spirit of wisdom and understanding. If you need more wisdom, you need more understanding, get filled with the Holy Spirit. It says he's a spirit of counsel and strength. When you need guidance and you need direction, the Holy Spirit counsels. He guides us. He's our strength. Excuse me. He's our strength. And it's a spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. And so when you think about that, the Holy Spirit is all that in a bag of chips, as somebody might say. Everything we need is found in a relationship with the Holy Spirit. That's why it's so important to be filled with the Spirit of God. So now that we've talked a little bit about who the Holy Spirit is, let's talk about what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit. The first thing is he guides us. And I know Pastor Curtis touched on this a little bit last week. In John chapter 16 and verse 13, it says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. 
for he will not speak on his own, but he will speak whatever he hears. He will also declare to you what is to come. So when you are being led by the Holy Spirit, you can have confidence that he's leading you into all truth. When you don't know which way to go, when you have uncertainties or you have decisions you need to make and you don't know what's the right decision, the Holy Spirit will guide you and lead you into all truth. And it says when he speaks, he's only speaking what he hears from the Father. And so when the Holy Spirit is leading you, when the Holy Spirit is directing you, when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, you can know and rest assured that he is speaking to you directly from the mouth of God. He's downloading to you the heart of the Father. And so that's why it's so important to understand who the Holy Spirit is, to be able to recognize his voice and to be able to lean into having a deeper relationship and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We need his guidance. We need his direction. We need more of the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 16, 7, it talks about the Holy Spirit as our helper. In the Amplified Version, it says, But I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. And this is Jesus speaking. For I do not go away. If I do not go away, the helper, the comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, he will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Man, think about that. So the disciples were basically like, man, Jesus, why do you have to leave us? Why are you going away? And right here, he's basically saying, listen, it's to your benefit that I leave because what I'm leaving with you is even greater than what you've experienced by having me here in the flesh. You think about it, Jesus was here in human form, in the flesh, in a body. And as powerful as Jesus was, and as many miracle signs and wonders as he performed, he was limited by that body. He could only be in one place at one time. But see, when he left, he left us his Holy Spirit, and now he can be in all places at all times. Every believer is carrying the spirit of God. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, Jesus is there because his spirit lives on the inside of you. And so it's an awesome thing to think about the fact that the Holy Spirit is in us. He's with us. He's operating through us. And so he's our guide and he's our helper. And so now that we've talked about who the Holy Spirit is and what his purpose is, Let's talk about what it means to be filled with the Spirit. And so when we get saved as a believer, we all receive the Holy Spirit in a certain measure. So I want you to just imagine this with me. If I have a, a cup of water, right, and it's half full, that's kind of a picture of how when we get saved, we have the Holy Spirit to a certain measure. But there's more that's been made available to us. If I were to continue to pour water into that cup, until it's not only full, but it's overflowing. That's a great picture of what has been made available to us in the form of the Holy Spirit. You can have as much of him as you want, as much as you desire. He's available to all of us. And so when we get filled with the Spirit, some things begin to change, some things begin to shift. One of the first benefits of being filled with the Spirit is that we receive power. We receive power. There is nothing like having the power of the Holy Spirit operating in a believer's life. In Acts chapter one and verse eight, it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So notice there, it said, when you're filled with the Spirit, you receive power. And what is that power for? To be a witness. It's the Great Commission. That's what this whole thing is about. When Jesus came to earth and he died and was resurrected, his number one instruction to us as believers is go preach the gospel and make disciples. Be a witness, share the gospel, share me with everyone you come in contact with. But oftentimes what happens as believers is we feel inferior or we feel intimidated or inadequate and we're fearful. We're just walking in fear when it comes to sharing Christ and being a witness. But man, when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, he gives you power to be a witness. 
all of a sudden where you were once afraid and just walking in fear and intimidation, man, you begin to share Christ with everybody you meet because you can't contain this fire that's burning on the inside of you. So we see this with the story of Saul in Acts chapter nine, and most of you are probably familiar with this, but Saul was a persecutor of the church. He hated everything about Christians, Christianity, and followers of Jesus. And so his mission in life was to destroy the church. And right at that moment, it says he was on the road to Damascus and he had an encounter with Jesus that changed everything. It changed everything. It says in that moment that he was blinded and he began to, Jesus began to just really confront him and say, why are you persecuting me? Why are you attacking my church? I have a call on your life. I have an assignment for you to do and I'm gonna use you, Saul. And from that point, Saul went to a man named Ananias' house. And it said that Ananias laid hands on him. And at that moment, scales fell off of his eyes and he was filled with the spirit. And the very next thing we see happening is this guy, Saul, who was persecuting the church and trying to destroy everything to do with Jesus, he became his biggest witness. Everywhere he went, he was telling people, Jesus is the Messiah. You've got to know this Jesus. Yeah, I used to persecute the church, but I'm telling you, Jesus is the answer. He's the way, the truth, and the light. And so in the same way that Saul was converted and was filled with the Spirit and had a bold witness as a result, he'll do the same thing for you. When you're filled with the Spirit, you'll have a boldness about you where you'll wanna tell everybody you meet about Jesus. And so I wanna encourage you in that today. The second thing that the Holy Spirit does when we are filled with the Holy Spirit is it gives us power to resist sin. In Galatians 5, 16, it says, I say then, walk by the Spirit and you will certainly not carry out the desires of your flesh. You know, every day as a Christian, you're faced with temptation. The enemy wakes up every day trying to figure out how he can trip you up, how he can get you to stumble or fall. But when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, what you'll notice is things that used to tempt you don't tempt you as much because now you're filled with his spirit. And so there's no more room really for all those other things that were taking up residence in your life. You are filled with the Holy Spirit and all you wanna do is please God. All you wanna do is live for Jesus. All you wanna do is walk according to his purpose and his ways. And so it gives you power to resist sin, to be able to walk after the spirit so that you're not gratifying the desires of your flesh. So if you find yourself in a place where you just are constantly struggling with sin and you can't seem to shake it, man, I challenge you, get filled up with the Holy Spirit and watch how things change. The other thing that the Holy Spirit will do when we are filled with his spirit, it gives us power to operate in the supernatural to operate in the supernatural. You know, in Acts chapter two, it talks about the day of Pentecost. And we'll read about that in a minute, but the disciples were all in a room, in the upper room, it says, and as they were there seeking after God, it says that a sound like a mighty rushing wind blew in and the sound filled the place where they were sitting and on their, their heads sat tongues of fire and they all began to speak in a heavenly language that they had not learned. And if you read further along in that passage, it talks about how they begin to be a witness. The church was multiplied overnight and they begin to operate in signs and wonders with miracles following to the point that people were in awe. And I believe that is what God is calling the church to today. Right now, today, in these turbulent times where we're living, where there's such chaos, where it seems like the enemy is wreaking havoc, God is looking for the body of Christ and the church to rise with power and to begin to operate in the signs and wonders and miracles that he said we could operate in. The Bible tells us that Jesus said we would do the things he did and even greater. How is that possible? By his spirit. When we are filled with the spirit, that's when we're gonna be able to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. That's when we're gonna be able to do the things that Jesus did, miracles, miraculous things that are impossible in the natural will happen when we are filled with his spirit. And so when we get baptized in the Holy Spirit, now we are empowered to operate in the supernatural. 
And the other thing that's a, a great benefit of being filled with the Spirit is you can experience a spiritual high with no hangovers. Now, I know some of you watching, you haven't been saved all your life. Maybe you've been drunk a time or two. I'm not going to ask you to fess up. Don't worry about it. But listen, here's the thing about being drunk, right? The reason why people do that is because they want to experience that high, but it's temporary. And there's usually a pretty bad hangover after the fact and a lot of regret. But man, when you are filled with the spirit, there's a supernatural high that you never ever have to walk away from. It never has to end and there's no hangover. You know, I remember one of the first times I experienced something like this. Uh, and I, I have many experiences, but one that stands out in my mind, I, was, I think I was in high school and uh, I was in my youth group. And at that time, there was this movement kind of sweeping across the evangelical circles where people would get filled with the spirit and they just have this uncontrollable laughter and joy. And I was very skeptical, I'll be honest. I was like, that ain't real. They're faking. You know, people would be like all on the floor rolling around laughing uncontrollably. And I was like, that's not real. And so I went to this youth service and, uh, you know, we were just going after God. I mean, we were seeking God, worshiping, praying, crying out for a move of his spirit. And I'm one of those people that, hey, I want to know for myself. I'm, I'm like a show me for myself. I'm not going to take your word. God, if this is real, show me. And so in that moment, his spirit began to pour out. And all of a sudden, these kids were falling out and laughing and some were crying and all these manifestations started taking place. And so I said, okay, Lord, I'm not going to sit here and be a skeptic. If this is real, I want it. I want to experience this. Man, next thing I know, <laughs> I, I don't even remember all of the sequence of events here, but I fell out and I just began to laugh uncontrollably. It was a joy that I can't explain. It was like an unquenchable joy that was just bubbling out of my spirit. And I laughed and I laughed and I laughed for hours. And I was drunk in the spirit. I remember my mom coming to pick me up and I remember them having to help me to the car cause I could barely walk. And I remember getting home and I was just still laughing and just under this inexpressible, unexplainable presence and joy and it was just like the love of God just enveloping me and I remember the next morning when I woke up and I was talking to my mom like whoa what just happened she said you know all night even in your sleep I heard you through the walls laughing at like two three in the morning and I know some of you are listening to that story and you're like yeah right but I'm here to tell you personally this thing is real and it may not show up like that for you. It may not manifest like you, like that for you, and that's not even important. But what I want you to know is there's more available to you. If you've ever wondered if there's more to your walk with God than what you've experienced, yes, there is. God really wants to fill you with his spirit and he wants you to experience all of his presence and all of the power that he's made available to you. And so let's read really quickly here in Acts chapter two. Uh, starting in verse one, it says, when the day of Pentecost had arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like that of a violent rushing wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were staying. They saw tongues like flames of fire that separated and rested on each of them. Then they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were Jews staying in Jerusalem devout people from every nation under heaven. When the sound occurred, a crowd came together and was confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and amazed saying, look, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that each of us can hear them in our own native language? And so what happened is the Holy Spirit fell and it says they begin to speak in another language. And so I wanna talk now, what does it mean to speak in tongues? I wanna talk about that and really dig into this. So the Holy Spirit filled them and it said they begin to speak in languages they had not learned. So for instance, I don't know Spanish, believe it or not. I know a lot of people do, I don't. But in that moment, it would be as if the Holy Spirit fell on me and now I'm speaking perfect Spanish, even though I've never taught it. I've never, never been taught that, never learned it 
they begin to speak and they were praising God. And so the Holy Spirit can fill you with a language that maybe you've not learned, but it can be a, a witness to someone else because it said when other people were walking by, they were like, wow, I hear them speaking perfectly in my language and I know they don't know it, but they're praising God. And so the, the, when it comes to speaking in tongues, it's a language from God to God. And there's a known tongue, maybe that you haven't been taught, and then there's a heavenly language, right? That's just an angelic language between you and God. But when we are filled with the Spirit, we have power to pray on another level, on another level. Speaking in tongues is a gift of the Holy Spirit that's available to all believers. Now, I want to pause here and say this. If you don't speak in tongues, it doesn't mean you're not going to heaven. It doesn't make you any less of a Christian. It doesn't make people who speak in tongues better than you. It's just something available to you, right? I'm from Louisiana and we call it lanyap. It's bonus. It's just something extra that's available to you if you want it. It's a language that is from God. Romans 8, 26 says, in the same way, the spirit helps us in our weakness because we do not know what to pray for as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with inexpressible groanings. Sometimes in life, there are things that come up where you don't know how to pray. There are situations you face, you don't know how to pray. And when you have the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of, spe evidence of speaking in tongues, the Holy Spirit will pray through you the perfect prayer. You know, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but there may be times where maybe the Holy Spirit will drop somebody on your mind or your heart and you just feel like you're supposed to pray for them, but you don't know why, you don't know what's going on, you don't know what to pray. That's when I will pray in my prayer language. And the Holy Spirit is praying the perfect prayer. And I know whatever is going on in that person's life, he's handling it. And so being filled with the Holy Spirit is so important and it's so beneficial. The other thing to remember about being baptized in the Holy Spirit, the enemy can't interfere with that. Sometimes when you're praying in, in English, you know, you get distracted and all these thoughts are going back and forth and you're trying hard to focus in, but it's so difficult. But when you pray in the Spirit, just like you don't know what you're saying, neither does the enemy. And he can't interfere with that. So he gets nervous when you start praying in tongues because that's your secret weapon. And so now that we've talked about what it looks like to be filled with the spirit, how can we be filled? It's very simple. The first thing is you got to be open and receptive. You just have to be open to it. And then the other thing is you have to ask. It says in the word, ask and you'll receive, seek and you'll find, knock and the door will be open to you. Ask him, and after you ask, believe that he will fill you. No good thing will he withhold from us, the Bible tells us. And so you have to believe, doesn't matter how long you've been saved, doesn't matter if you feel like you're good enough or spiritual enough, that's not a prerequisite. You just have to have the faith to believe that he'll fill you, and then receive. Just that simple. And so I know that there are some of you who are watching this and maybe you are in this place and you've been longing for more and you've been desperate for more. Maybe you want to be filled with the evidence of speaking in tongues. It's available to you and God will fill you if you ask and you believe. He'll fill you. And so I just want to pray right now in this moment for those of you who are wanting to be filled that the Holy Spirit would fill you to overflowing. But before that, you may be watching and maybe you haven't even taken the first step to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Today is your day. Don't waste a moment. Because before all this other stuff we're talking about, being filled with the Spirit, the most important thing is to have Him in your life as Lord and Savior so that when you leave this side of heaven, you can spend eternity with Jesus. And so if that's you, just repeat after me. Say, dear Jesus, come into my heart. Cleanse me of my sin. Forgive me of every wrongdoing. I believe that you came and you died in my place on the cross and that you rose again. And now I receive you into my heart as Lord and Savior of my life. 
And I ask you to help me to serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. Best decision you will ever, ever make. And now I want to pray quickly with those who are wanting to be filled with the Spirit. And I believe we're going to give an opportunity in our house churches as well. But I just want you to just know that God wants to fill you and he will fill you today if you ask him. So, Father, we just pray for every person who's listening uh, and under the sound of my voice, God, who is hungry for more, who's been seeking you and wanting to be filled with your spirit. God, you said that if we ask, we would receive. And so in this moment, I ask you to fill every person, Lord, who is wanting more of your spirit, more of your power, more of your presence. Father, we know that it's available to us. And Father, we know you're no respecter of persons. So just like you filled me and so many others, I ask you to fill them to overflowing God. And Lord, that their lives would never, ever be the same. And Father, we thank you, we expect it, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Six 
experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness, Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long. Every week here at Bridges Nashville, we take communion as a remembrance of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us on the cross. The last time that Jesus broke bread with his disciples was immediately before his crucifixion. And in Matthew 26, 26, we read, While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Now Jesus knew what he was about to do was to go have his body broken and his blood poured out on the cross for forgiveness of our sins. So right now, let's take this bread and drink this juice as a remembrance of the amazing sacrifice that Jesus made for you and for me.